Wow. She was a general when she was a teenager. That's one bossy transgender kid. You know, anytime you see somebody with a dyke haircut and a sword, <laughs> something's about to happen. Run, yeah. run. You know what I'd like to see? What? On, on logo? Please tell Joan us. of Noah's Ark. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? That would be awesome. Have you ever seen my uh, Joan of Arc impression? No. Watch her, it's like... <laughs> it's really not very she funny. She was burned alive. She was everywhere. burned, yeah. Just for those of you who aren't, <laughs> haven't been boning up in your history, your French history, that's that's really not funny. But um, I didn't know that, that she was a, a, a soldier when she was a teenager. I guess that's... Um, it's a testament to how strongly she believed in her in her things. Right. Yeah, and for once the Catholic Church recognized somebody, you know, crossing gender boundaries right. besides the priests. Right, besides the priests. Skin besides dresses. all those men living in Italy with the dresses and the yeah. purses that are on fire. <laughs> and the popes and the Prada shoes and all that. Well, you know, the Catholic Church is getting very progressive. I believe they just... Um, forgave Galileo or something. It's only 500 years in America. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, Good better job. late than never. Good job, everybody. Wow. Now, did you think that was really about gender or this trans person just didn't want anybody to know her real birthday? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, somebody here was able to change their birth certificate because really? they're from a cool state. Which one? And somebody wasn't. Oh. What? Way to represent Tennessee. You <laughs> represent know? Tennessee. Ooh. Anytime something's like, you know, isn't on the books yet, it's always Ohio or Tennessee. What's with, up with that? It's it's just slow down the list. You know, really? Because we're, we're dealing with brothers and sisters getting married oh. and getting electricity mm -hmm. started in the yeah. main cities. And Taking so. care of critters by, out by the cement pond. Right, right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. I guess first <laughs> Not to cast aspersions on our, our viewers at Tennessee. You're all very valuable to us, and I'm sure you're intelligent, well-read people. Well, I'm from Tennessee, and, and I'm, I'm right smart, actually. Case in point. So wait, tell me about your birth certificate drama. Well, it's great. You know, um, I represent the Midwest. Midwest! Okay. And uh, the state I'm from, uh, they allow you to change it, and they also allow you to seal the record, which means that there's no evidence that I was not born female. Now, this is just in the case of you just wanted to change that, uh, you know. Well, you need to do that to right. get a marriage certificate right. and to change some of your other federal documents. Wow. So it's complicated. It's it's all. Mixed I can't up. even get them to block my birthday on the IMDb. <laughs> I know. I entered it in when I first joined, and now I'm like, don't, don't. Why? Did I do why? That? why? I can still play Anjanus. I can. <laughs> An open, tolerant, diverse culture. Hmm, what a concept. Oh, Toto, do you think there really is such a place? Let's click our heels and find out. <laughs> now is kind of an exciting time because there is a dialogue taking place. You know, people are speaking out. We are a part, of, a very visible part of the media, so I think that's progress. I do too, and you know, sometimes they say special rights, but it's not special rights. We're just asking for the simple, basic rights that everybody should have. Right. Yeah, surprise, we're human beings. Yeah, really? I know. Yeah. What a <laughs> special rights. <laughs> I want special rights <laughs> and a special sh special shoe. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. At a diner in Philly. See, that's where they got between a girl and her food. That's and, right. Yeah. And don't, don't. You Down. know, there was a similar thing in San Francisco at a place called Compton's Cafeteria where before Stonewall, a bunch of trans people were having a lot of problems. And right. And they, they finally got sick of it and just stepped up and had was a it a, was a Was it a riot in a restaurant? It, it was like, yeah. you know, throwing high heels and all that kind of stuff oh, and out man. on the street. You know, don't mess with people when they're hungry. Yeah, and, and to defend Tennessee a little bit, mm -hmm. one of the first African-American lunch counter protests happened in Nashville City. They did a sit-in in one of the counters downtown and um, sort of kicked off a lot of that stuff in Tennessee. Right. This was in 1965. I just, I'm just curious about what the hair looked like back then. I think a lot of beehives. A lot of beehives. Bigger to hair, yeah. closer to God. It was like this before it was curled and teased. Right. Like they've been touching a Van de Graaff <laughs> right. generator exactly. or something. Yeah, like nerve endings. <laughs> Y'all are too smart for your own <laughs> yeah, I suppose. 
You know what always bothers me about Stonewall? What? It's a very small bar, but if you ask like gay men of a certain age, they were all there. They were all there. Like everybody knows somebody who was in the emergency room the you know, the night Richard Gere was, you know, wheeled in. <laughs> right. The right. stuff legends are made right. of. Right. Yeah. Is that right? See, I think this would um, pass quicker if it was referred to as Edna. Right, sounds yeah, like an old aunt right, or something. Who wants to speak out against Edna? Right. I'm against Edna. She brought me cookies one yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Edna sounds, you know, I'm for Edna. I, I would be, but, you know, <laughs> as it stands, it, it can still be, you know, I'm sorry, Trangela, you're fired. And <laughs> right. There's nothing you can do. But this was actually happening while we were filming. Yeah. Remember, it was coming up that they weren't going to be including transgender in the language, and that just baffled us. I remember us going, like, it would pass faster. Like, oh, well, they like the homos so much more than the transgender people, so right. this is the safest and fastest way to get this passed. And a lot of people looked at us, you know, as equals, but then we got undersold at the end by people who saw us as a political liability. And yeah. that's, that's always unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, look at these faces. For, for just 10 cents a day, you could sponsor <laughs> us in the end of bill, and we could have a job. Right, 10 cents a day. The price of a cup of coffee. <laughs> at a really cheap Give place. Give till it hurts. <laughs> So trans people have been around since the beginning of civilization. What was that like, Andrea? <laughs> ah, all right, that's You know it. what? I'm not going to get in between you two because it just ends up bloody with somebody crying. <laughs> well, I do want to say, Les right. Feinberg is an amazing human being, mm -hmm. and everybody should read the book Transgender Warriors. It's really, and I actually cried. It's one of the few things that ha can actually make a soulless person like me cry. Really? Somebody who's dead inside was actually brought to tears by this book. But, uh, you know, every time I'm reminded of people by, uh, like Les Feinberg and, and the times that they lived, lived in it, it just reminds me that we are standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, people who lived in really repressive times and were writing books like this have really helped push the culture forward. It's true. Yeah. And, you know, we wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for a lot of brave people, yeah. you know, who, who have made it possible right. to make us, let, here, let us sit here and make stupid jokes. Yeah, so and, uh, less hats off. This was a particularly disturbing case to me because I'm from the Bay Area, mm -hmm. you know, I, and this took place like less than two hours from San Francisco, which, which is supposedly the most progressive, left, liberal, open, accepting city on, in the universe. So uh, the fact that this could take place in proximity to some place, you know, like San Francisco is just indicative of how much further we have to go. Yeah, and yeah. one or two uh, trans people a month get killed, and it's it's an epidemic that basically goes unreported unless right. it's a really terrible case like Gwen's. Right. And it's usually people who are the most vulnerable in society, you know, people who are doing sex work or have been kicked out of the house or right. are very young and, um, you know, people of color. So it's, it's really a problem that affects the entire community mm -hmm. because our youngest and most vulnerable are the people who we need to protect the most. Absolutely. This is a big issue. I had to pay most of my health care out of pocket when I was transitioning, and uh, most other people do too. I was lucky to have a good job. But right. You were it, in advertising. Yeah. It would have been yeah. harder if you were like a, you know. Well, my job was to dress up like a nurse mm -hmm. sometimes <laughs> on stage, but um, that was about as close as I got to being right. able to afford medical care in the early days. Really? I dated a few doctors. But. Well, that's, that's thrifty. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get any medical care. Really? Oh, God, that's how I would work it. Listen, be, you know, I love for you, some honey. Can you look at I this will. neck right Yeah, here? listen, it burns when I pee. <laughs> and, but can you give me something? I'll, I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> yeah, but health care is, is one of the major issues. And, and leave it to San Francisco to uh, come up with a trans inclusion act. And you know what it was? At first, everybody was really scared. Oh, our rates are going to go up. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to join the city uh, payroll in order right. to get all these procedures. And it didn't turn out that way, of course. 
<laughs> You're stunned know. by I, the, uh, yeah that nobody <laughs> rang the trans alarm bell. Right, you yeah, know. So yeah. so we're hoping other cities will. <laughs> Well, you'd know all about that because well, your your site is like so informative and popular, and yours is as well. My personal ads on mm -hmm. golddiggers.com are <laughs> really moving us forward. Mine's on notintheface.com, <laughs> and it's uh, like a billion hits per second. <laughs> um, no, but you actually do have uh, two very popular sites, and yours is very informative in, in terms of educating people about the the transition, correct? Yeah, um, we have a suite of websites that mm -hmm. get uh, almost 10,000 visitors a day, and um, one of them, tsroadmap.com, mm -hmm. uh, just sort of is a how-to site on how to transition. And it went up in the mid-90s when, you know, the internet was still in its little baby stage. Right. <laughs> right, and uh, it's really grown into a thing now where I get letters from people who found it then, and they say, "I'm graduated from college. I found your oh. site when I was ten, and I'm getting married." And so it's just a really nice feeling. I don't get yeah. messages like that on my site. <laughs> They're like, "Why haven't you called?" <laughs> well, you know, a lot of us are, are so scared to talk about these trans feelings mm -hmm. or we're embarrassed and stuff, and the internet has been such an invention to let us communicate and get this information privately. And right. And, and, and anonymously, you, yeah. which is important if you live in an area where it's hard to be different or it's hard for you to be who you are. Right. Because yeah. when I was little, I, you know, I was, lived in a rural... Rural area. I went to the local library mm -hmm. looking for information in the card catalog. The which card back catalog. In the day, that's how you did Excuse it. Excuse me, Mrs. Flintstone. I need to look something up. <laughs> was and, Ben Franklin the librarian? <laughs> I think so, yeah. And uh, there was nothing, of course. So right. when I when I saw what the internet could do, that was when I said, "Hey, I should put some stuff out there," and it's ended up being a good thing. Thank goodness for the World Wide Web. Mm -hmm. Plus, I got to see dogs that can say "I love you" and things like that. That's the best part. It's really true. I mean, think about what's the first thing that parents say when a baby's born? It's a boy, it's a girl. Like, or we're immediately... You need to get a job. <laughs> well, that, that too. I think I remember hearing that in the <laughs> delivery room. <laughs> I, all I know is that if I go to prison, I want to share a cell with Martha Stewart, mm -hmm. you know, not, not some, some men's prison or something. Right. And, and these issues that the legal community does divide us up, uh, a lot of times when we're getting justice or even having justice applied to us, there, there's so much, so much prejudice that it's hard for us to fight because we don't even have the educational or money resources to get lawyers and things right. like that sometimes. Right. And like bathrooms are such a big issue in our community. And if you look at most civil rights issues in the last century or so, it's about bathrooms. You know, like black bathrooms and white mm -hmm. bathrooms, colored bathrooms, and so when or handicapped bathrooms right. and and for some reason you know male female bathrooms are probably going to be the next big frontier do you remember any particular legal battles that you had to go through well certainly you know getting things changed legally in terms of documentation is mm -hmm. becoming harder and harder because of federal versus state IDs right. and that kind of thing um, but it's it's all a real struggle and if you're not you know at a certain level it, it gets even harder because it's it's complicated and it's not fun right Human Rights Commissioner of Columbia, Missouri is a transgender person. I had great? no idea. Well, you know, one of the problems is that trans men tend to be invisible in our society. Right. And they're finally getting their voice, they're, they're getting out there, and some really amazing people are finally getting the, the due that they deserve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but, she I said. Think, but it just reminds me, I mean, like, this... I think that I'm kind of a well-read person. I put down the Spider-Man comic books every once in a while and actually pick up a, a tome of some kind. And this was actually news to me. So I feel like there's, there's, there's entire histories that we're just being made aware of yep. right now. We're learning too out there. Absolutely. Yep. Right along with you. trans person worked on the microchip design. I know, indirectly, she made my best friend possible, Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Well, I would think, like, you know, you know, 
the particular meticulousness of that kind of like brings to mind all the jewels that are on your phone. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I, you know, a little piece of Lynn Conway is in almost everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> It really is amazing, though. I mean, if you look at her site, she mm -hmm. has photos of herself, like, in the 70s, uh, uh, or even the 60s, maybe, mm -hmm. like, in these cute little mod skirts, and, and so here it is awesome. working at IBM. Like, and she got fired instantly when she came out at IBM and had to start her career over in stealth, and that's when she made her greatest inventions, after she transitioned and after she started over. That's amazing. Yeah. So it was a really tough time back then, right. and if it weren't for women like her, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be using, like, we are all part of that uh, tech, technological advancement that was invented by a trans person. Yeah. Woohoo! Yes. That's great. Well, I'm confused because I thought this was about Medea. You know, that Medea is the, hilarious. Oh, so funny. And oh, Oprah this. loves that Medea, but it's not. It's about media. Oh, okay. Well, that's not uh, Put the wrong emphasis on the word. So uh, how do you, do you guys have any particularly strong feelings about the kind of media images that um, are being presented that's, to us nowadays? That's kind of what we're all about, really? actually, for the last five years. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I, I know. It's a bump in the set. They were filming you. <laughs> filming you. Well, He's softballing yeah. you here. Well, <laughs> Because the media has been a tool used against us by outsiders mm -hmm. for so long to portray us, you know, how they want to portray us, how they want to keep us. But now people in the GLBT community, especially, you know, trans people, are able to make their own media and show show the true faces of our community that, you know, we're actually human beings. We're, we're smart and cool and have things to contribute. So check out Trans American Love Story, right here on Logo. Coming up next. It's, it's, I've heard it, I've, I've. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all folks. I've actually uh, heard tell about this. Um, they were actually referred to as the Berdash. Right. Within the society, in, the two spirit people. Yes, exactly. And uh, they were really important parts of, of their tribes, mm -hmm. and they had a place in their society for them that when Western civilization came in and saw what was going on, they're right. like, kill them. Right. That's wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, it could have made Pocahontas a whole different movie, I think. Oh, that would have been awesome. John yeah. Smith got something to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> But um, actually, Bradash er, is a, a term that the, the French explorers applied to them, and a lot of um, Native American Two Spirit people now don't like that term because, oh, oops. well, I mean, it's it's hard to keep up with this evolving, you know, language mm -hmm. as we start to get our voices. Right. But well, I'm um, Oriental. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Asian. Hey, Alex. the French called us that too. Oh. So they they prefer they prefer two spirit. Two spirit. Yeah. I've heard that at the um, Lambda Legal Defense dinner oh. a while back. Two spirit. Mm -hmm. I like that. So it doesn't matter what's under your loincloth. No, two, <laughs> two, two spirits in <laughs> one. Boy, that gives a whole meaning to don't ask, don't tell, huh? <laughs> the official state hero of Massachusetts, y'all. Yeah, see, we were already in the military then, but they won't let us in now. Right. Oh, with a bitter irony. Oh. Well. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something oh, else. Me too. I know. I was waiting for, way for you. I wow. Well. That's all we have to say. <laughs> well. So anyway, I was Goodness. at Target the other day, and there was a two-for-one special. I'm on, sorry, but on uh, poor minimizing makeup. So I got a bunch. <laughs> These are hard resist. to make funny. I mean, yeah. not that I can't. No, but Massachusetts, the official state. <laughs> oh, <my word>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll cover Christ for it. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll keep my hat in the ring. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. Did you just hear my stomach yeah, growl? I don't know. I haven't eaten in three days. <laughs> Priestesses throughout history. I think there. Uh, I would have had a much better childhood if there were priestesses in my parish because there was what nothing but priests, and I had to listen to a folk mass every day. Oh, That's goodness. tough. Yeah, That's that tough. was tough. You know. It's 
there's an interesting thing where if you look at almost every religion, the LGBT community is heavily represented in the holy part of their culture. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the celibacy and things like that, I think, resonate with people in our community because we preserve culture, we keep culture, and it makes sense. That Keepers of the flame and the flaming, as it yes, were. Yes, indeed. <laughs> It's such a difficult thing now because I think we have a lot of spirituality that mm -hmm. we've had to develop to take, you know, sort of take in all the, the cruelty and the, the difficult things that we get past. But churches that are in existence now, a lot of them exclude us. It's really weird considering our history. The history of priestesses. Exactly. I want to be a priestess. I love the outfits. <laughs> I, I have a prayer request for you. <laughs> <laughs> Judas priestess. <laughs>I think this is great because there's like a whole new generation of kids out there who are queer and questioning who just go, you know what? I'm genderqueer. I'm figuring it out. I don't want to put a label on it. And I think that's so healthy. Yeah, I mean, why why really do dresses go to girls and, and pants go to boys and short hair for men and long hair for women? What? Who made that up? Why does it matter? Right. Macy's. Yeah, Macy's. <laughs> I can't afford to shop there, so I, I don't know. I'll take your word for it. I wouldn't know about it. But, but Kmart does it, too, so exactly. you, you would know about that. The, the genderqueer aisle at Kmart. <laughs> <laughs> Should I wear the overalls or the daisy top? Yeah. No, but I think, that, I think that it's a really kind of expansive terminology. I think yeah. that it, gives, it allows people a space to figure things out. And I, that, that wasn't around when I was a kid, so I think it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, it's just, it's nice that people are playing with it, too, mm -hmm. because it is play. It's fun. Mm -hmm. and, and But it's also transgressive, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Make your parents go, Oh, these kids oh, these days. Oh, <laughs> genderqueer kids. Smoking that pot and bad mouth in America. <laughs> <laughs> My parents just kind of disapprovingly <laughs> nodded. Oh, well, <laughs> you haven't met mine. So. My parents were like that, but it was with a Filipino accent. <laughs> <laughs> you genderqueer. All right, a trans person with $40 million. Watch out, know. world. Yeah, what would your $40 million life look like, Calpurnia? Um, what would that She'd what have a gold entail? toilet. <laughs> solid gold. And I, I, somebody of, would brush my teeth in the morning. pink and cashmere and, yeah. and shirtless male <laughs> servant. Just like in my house. <laughs> oh, God. No, but, but Reed is really one of the most important people in the history of GLBT community. Mm -hmm. really, he really did make a major difference, and he, he doesn't, you know, he's not a household name, which is surprising. Right. Which is surprising, especially since he was dealing in such a, uh, a hyper-masculine environment that is business, that is finance. I mean, it just, it just uh, goes to show you there are trans people in every single walk of society. It's yeah, true. it's he's he's like the transsexual. You show up to a party with a jello mold, and he's brought like an eight-layer torque. There's from always one of those. Right. Oh, <laughs> people like that. But you should read about him. He's a really amazing guy. Check it out online. You know, I won't even send back a dish at a restaurant. I'm so timid. So it's always amazing when people <laughs> will stand up and, like, fight for their rights right. like that. Well, you have to think about the day. It was June in New York, which is always mm. a picnic. And it was uh, Judy Garland's, uh, the day of Judy Garland's funeral. Oh. And, and these were people who were being routinely harassed by the police. Routinely. It was, it, was, it was pretty like clockwork. Like at some point, sometime during the night where you'd be at a club or a bar, the cops would come in and rough everybody up. So this was like the wrong day, the wrong time. And somebody, that Sylvia, had a rock and was like, that's it, I'm done. So once again, trans people are forced to like lead the charge mm -hmm. to sit on the back of the bus. Ah, oh, see... We got you your rights. We got the ball rolling. Don't forget that. Wag that finger, Cal Prenia. Just <laughs> wag it. It's, it's always amazing to me when people take something really tragic and turn it into something that makes a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the Matthew Shepard case, Brandon mm -hmm. Tina 
um, you know, bury it with you. And, and those, those situations are awful, but a lot of times those are catalysts for change. Yeah, it's, it's hard to go through situations like that. And as I learned, you know, with Soldier's Girl to retell it, but I think movies and media are the best way to get these stories into the living rooms of middle America. Right. I mean, that Brandon Tina's story made people think about things that they had never thought about In before. an entirely different way. Yeah. Yeah. We're a united front. I really can't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> we text each other. We're BFFs. Yeah, we're BFFs. We're united. I called you while I was folding my underpants the other day. I think that makes us friends. <laughs> Every time you call me, you're folding your underpants. Well, I, you know, I, I'm And you had them on at the time. I had them on at the time, so that's why my back is killing me. <laughs> no, but do you feel like... What's your general experience of the LGBT community? Do you feel like I grew up in San Francisco, so it was, it, you know, so that was part of my vocabulary growing up that we have to be united, we have to stick together. Has that been your experience as well? Well, my first friends were wilderness lesbians in Alaska, and mm -hmm. I was—it's like being raised by wolves. I was <laughs> raised by these wilderness lesbians and on this island in Alaska. Being raised by wolves with really great camping equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it—it it was awesome. You know, the the gay community has been my support network through this whole thing. It, it's almost kind of scary being in the straight world now, you know, because I, I don't know them very well. I, I, I'm learning, but the gay community, of, uh, they always got my back. Have you seen pictures of Christine Jorgensen? I, I've seen pictures. I have her album. I've seen the movie. You got the lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, uh, she's a fascinating character. You mm -hmm. know, she was so sexy, so feminine. Right, and Christine and Jorgensen. <laughs> <laughs> You're cracking yourself up again. It's, I know, uh, I do that. And it's the voices that talk to me off right. you know, in my head. Christine Jorgensen. <laughs> Christine Jorgensen. <laughs> No, but she was a very glamorous icon at the time. I mean, it was... Um, you know, up. her thing came out the same month that Playboy started. The first Marilyn Monroe cover of Playboy came out the same month that XGI Becomes Blonde Beauty was splashed across the front page of the, the New York same Post. time. Yeah. So it was like a moment in time when all these things converged and made it possible for her to become this superstar. And she really, you know, everything since then has been an echo of her fame and fortune. Just think what will be echoing minutes from now. <laughs> What will, what will echo from us? I think well, from her to be Christine Jorgen. Christine Jorgen. <laughs> I just hope I'm in a safe place when that happens. It's not really an echo, but there's a certain odor. <laughs> yeah, that, I think so. Yeah. Anybody got any matches? A trans person was honored during the Civil War. Besides her. <laughs> Thank you very much. It oh, makes you think about Gone with the Wind. Like, who's transgender in that? I'm thinking Aunt Pity Pat. Mm, could be. Yeah. Could be. Aunt Scarlett, I, I think basically. Ashley was, like, one step away that right. her boyfriend, FTM. Ashley. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, who else? Just what? the entire cast was transgender, <laughs> Gone with the Wind. I, that's the movie that needs to be made and call me for the Right. Family the transgender, Gone with the Wind. Yeah. 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 It was brother against brother or sister against brother. But Something you know, like that. I, getting back to the subject right. at hand, mm -hmm. um, I didn't know any of that stuff. Did you guys know? No, I'm and not even going to pretend like I knew that I was knew a everything. Fact. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great, you know, because we didn't know, you know now. It's, it's, these are important things to talk about. And right. it's, it's, it's really cool that uh, trans men are finally getting their due. And knowing is half the battle. You know, that's interesting because, for instance, <laughs> she's, and I'll she's you XXX, <laughs> your X's and O's, hugs and kisses, Aww. and I'm just an ox. 
No, explain the whole the whole X Y thing. I was told it was that just brings yeah. up math for me, and my my ADD kicks in. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm just hearing hoots and clicks. Well, the the good thing is, you know, all these chromosomal tests that mm -hmm. say you're a man or a woman mm -hmm. are subject to the same problems with the binary. You know, biology is very messy, and people want to pretend like it's not. Right. But it it is. You know, there's it's all messy this Calpurnia. <laughs> It's messy and it's sticky. Mm. So, <laughs> so the X and the Ys determine. In, in the majority of cases, mm -hmm. an XY chromosome person comes out as male and an XX comes out as female. But there is some variance in there, and there are actually even other chromosomal configurations that can result in various gender expressions in people. And there's a, a famous uh, doctor who actually works with a lot of people who mm -hmm. are intersex like that, and uh, he says... Nature loves diversity and society hates it. And that's really what it comes down to. That's brilliant. I thought so too, that's why I added it. So you two don't have to answer the thing about youth, but for me, um, <sighs> it's, it's really... Um, <laughs> you know, I don't have Last any... Last week during my 12th birthday, I got a Barbie, and no, what we were talking about this during uh, the making of it. There was that kid who was on 60 Minutes who was identifying as female, and she's like, what, how old was the kid? Like seven or so. Seven yeah. or so, and, and, and surrounded by people who completely support her. Yeah, because most all of us had these feelings when we were younger, but we just weren't allowed to even think about them. I'm on the board of a group called Trans Youth Family Advocates that actually helps children transition. And uh, when I was home a few weeks ago, I actually met somebody who transitioned before kindergarten and is just going through school, and it's been cool. And this is in a small town. Right. So things are really starting to change for young people. And uh, I don't know, it's an exciting time. Zeal. Zeal, isn't he married to Heidi Klum's? <laughs> Silly. Um, zeal. Well, it, it's true. You know, we this is our moment. We're we're getting out there. You know, we're we're showing up, and um, yeah, you got to have a lot of zeal when all these opportunities are opening up. I'm excited. Yeah, it really does feel like an amazing time, and we're so glad that our. G, L, and B allies are coming along for the ride with us. Don't to help make us me out. cry. Don't do it. Not on camera. I don't want to see the country fall behind. <laughs> so it's, you know, it is a very exciting time, but you do have to stay excited and keep that zeal. Stay excited. It's too easy to be cynical. It's too easy to be jaded. It's too busy to feel defeated. I feel like new and exciting things are happening every day, and um, I'm really excited to be a part of that. Me too. Well, thank you for, for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, California. Big hug, come here. Yay. Yay. Done. <laughs> awesome.